Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Shiva Adure. Hope everyone's doing well. We're going to have a uh, interesting discussion today about the diapers that they're forcing, you know, young kids to wear. Um, but I'm going to, uh, as some of you may know, I did a, a video earlier about the oral health issues. Um, but today I'm going to talk about some of the very emerging new data that's coming out um, concerning developmental issues. And the interesting thing is with kids relative to their ability to recognize faces, this is relatively a new area of research, probably about the last 10 years more recently, going back to the 80s. So it's not like this work has been done for many, many years. So we're going to wait for people to join, but that's what we're going to be talking about. So we have people from Sydney. Um, we have a very important event on May 1st. And by the way, let me just show you some of our great Truth, Freedom and Health warriors who are right here coming in. Everyone say hello. Uh, we're, right uh, we're right here in Cambridge, Cambridge Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Let me just let me do just a solo, solo layout. layout. So we have, we have Michelle, Michelle and Sequoia. She's going to be attending, be attending the event, too. Uh, uh, Sequoia. Sequoia. We have Mesa. Mesa. We have, we have Margo, Margo, John, John Sandy. Sandy. Hi. Hey, John. So, uh, but anyway, we're going to have a, a great event on May 1st, which is, which is really to talk, to talk about, about the intersection of truth, freedom, freedom and health. Um, it's, it's extremely important, important that we start recognizing that we, that we need to move beyond the, the pro versus anti issue on anything, on anything and really use science. science. Unfortunately, what's happened is this far, far too long. Um, science has become back tabled, and, and and what we've done is we've put forward scientific consensus versus the scientific method. So I'll be talking about that on May one. Um, I think uh, on May one is going to be an important event because. We're really going to focus on the intersection of why we need to fight for freedom. From freedom is how we get to truth, which is science, in this case, real science. And from real science, we can understand what's the appropriate thing for the health of us, our children, our infrastructure, et cetera. And with the right, someone's saying is there's echo. That's from the phone, yeah. So what should I do? Mike? Probably there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, turn the phone microphone off. Okay, is that better? Is that less echo now? No, mute the microphone. It is muted. I'm still hearing the echo out of there. So, okay, then. Let me. Do you want to switch seats? No. Let me say. Uh, I don't know why this is. The volume is low. Are you guys still getting echo? Better? Still echo or no? Oh, that's better. Okay. So, we're not getting any echo now. Um, so, I'll turn on the mic. We need to. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we have uh, people, John, why don't you, maybe you should hold this over there, mm -hmm. okay? All right, and when I, you can point it to people when you need, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so but that's what we're gonna talk about today, but um, someone says it's lower, but it's still happening. Let me, oh, I know what I can do. I can reduce the volume here. Let me see if I can reduce the volume here. There, is that better? Or just kind of the volume thing, John? There, okay, is that better? Good. Um, so anyway, um, but anyways, as John can sh share with you, we're right here, John, you can just point to people here. So we're here um, at our offices in Cambridge. By the way, I wanna let people know something. Um, John's gonna share this with you, but uh, we have, you know, as, as many of you know, I'm also a scientist, full-time scientist, but this is our first product that we put together, which came out of science of computing, um, trillions of molecular pathways to understand what is the right thing for pain and inflammation. So all of our volunteers, John, you can show people, uh, are right here. And they're actually, John, you want to show people what we're doing here? Mm -hmm. So people have, have people have come in on their Saturdays to actually help us do the packaging. Because of COVID, there's been a lot of issues. You can't even get uh, bottles and those kinds of things. So what we've been doing is uh, we just got bottles and these kinds of things. But all these are going to be shipped out today. So any of you um, who've been working on that uh, or who've ordered them, uh, be mindful that you're going to be getting them very soon. But it, but it's really been a logistics issue with COVID. It's been uh, really, really. But anyway, MV25 is out. It's my first product. It's based on using a systems approach to understanding what's going on in the body. So let's talk about a little bit about um, the developmental issues. So many of you know that my grandmother uh, was somebody who could look at your face. And based on looking at your face, she could predict what was going on inside your body. Some of you may know that, right? Um, um, and this is a technique, John, I'm also, you can also keep people there. This is a technique called Samudrika Lakshana. Okay, there is a technique, an ancient technique in India called Samudrika Lakshana. Lakshana means face, 
Okay, Samudra means the analysis of the face. And there's a theory that says that, you know, the ability to observe someone's face is one of the most wisest things that you can be able to do, right? Because you can quickly make decisions. So, so just keep that in the back of your mind. The ability to do face uh, analysis, look at the face, the traits of the face. There is a lot of evidence that particular of your face refer to particular parts of your organs. So for example, the nose is heart. The center of the eyes is liver underneath kidneys. So if you see people, you know, if you look drunks with a big bulging nose, for example, uh, if you remember when uh, Bill Clinton was going through his stuff, he knows he had a heart issue. So anyway, um, there's very interesting correlations between face and different organ systems. That's right, because everything is ultimately interconnected if you take a systems approach. If you take a systems approach, which is what we teach at VHIVA.com, and those of you who are interested, go to VHIVA.com to learn more about that. But add uh, that up because people want to know. But you can go to BHIVA.com. But the bottom line is that face is really a window to things. So that means that the human being, a human being based on their development and their uh, ability to, again, uh, here, uh, people are working on, John's working on MV25. Uh, but uh, the issue is face is a window to help. I mean, everyone knows you get up in the morning and if you're really tired and you get sleep, it shows up in your face. Everyone, you, you can see it in your face. Uh, if you have any other issues going on in life, um, anger typically, people furrow their brows, that's liver, liver, anger, okay? Um, every emotion is connected to the face. So over the last 10 years, there's been some, um, or uh, research, not a good connection. Are we connected, John? Yeah, we're, we're okay. Uh, someone says it's blurry coming here. Which yeah, one are you? The stream is low res right now. The res only by increasing the strength of the signal, which I don't have to okay. To. That's the building's internet. Okay, so um, we can go on and maybe go on the five gigahertz. Sure, if you sure, I don't know the password, but me and mine. Okay. Still blurry, guys. People are saying it's blurry. How about this signal? Well, we'll continue. Okay. So under eyes is is kidneys. You know, adrenals, right? So one of the most important things is under kids are young. Turns out that there are. Epigenetic issues, which means the ability when a kid interacts with the world, potentially genetic issues on how the kids learn to associate face traits with that individual's behavior and to make decisions. And that occurs, the, the, the recent research says, I think it at seven months, and by the time a child five years old, by the time a child five years old, the child's ability to associate a face, facial traits with particular uh, characterizations is equal to an adult at the age of five. It's quite amazing. So that means most of the development is somewhere between the age of two to five. So what would it mean if you, if a ch child was exposed to people where the faces are actually covered all the time? It's quite a profound question, scientific question. The latest research that came out of, that was just published in April, 2019, in psychology today, uh, which looked back at much of the research, it showed something quite fascinating. What that research showed was that, um, first of all, let's find what we mean by face traits. Well, the, the traits could be the strength of someone's chin, right? The size of their eyes, right? The width and the size of their eyes, the size of their uh, eyebrows, okay? Uh, uh, the emotions people show, the size of their smile. So there's about a set of these face traits. So what they did in this read was they literally have a computer, which has, and they could literally manipulate uh, cleverly different of these traits, get three types of, of characterizations. One was called trust, so not trustworthiness, which is someone's nice or not nice. Strength, okay, denoted by dominance, which you get a strong person or a weak person. And then the last one 
uh, was competence, right? Smart or not smart. Look at someone's face, it looks sort of goofy. You could say the person's not smart, but I'm sort of, <laughs> or um, face, you know, looks weak, right? So they're not weak, strong chin, you say they're they're strong, dominant. Um, and then who, ha who is, um, uh, uh, okay? So it turns out those three features, somewhere between <clears throat> seven months to around five years, um, initially when kids are young, the early in the late 80s, said kids make these about just good or bad, right? Whose face to look at and who's, so that's like two buckets. But as the child, the child's other capabilities to uh, distinguish gets more refined, okay? So trust, trust, right? Strength, uh, competence. Is this making sense? Okay. What this means is during that period, seven months to five years of age, um, of likely genetic things are being turned on genetic things which are turned on by the environment so if we have a gender of kids or uh, or kids at young age where they can't even see the teacher right or they can't even see adults how is that developing their ability to develop those organizations to observe someone because the important thing is the this ability to develop these ability to characterize face directly results in your ability to the person's behavior and how you're going. So there may be, we don't know, this is an area of research, there may be epigenetic clues. Oh, act untrustworthy, okay? And we may be biologically built at a young age to learn this skill. And if you don't learn it, it could mean the difference between life or death, right? Or, you know, uh, whether you should associate with someone or not. So I think so one of the, uh, I'll, I'm going to do some more talks on this, but looking at what's occurring here, I think the unfortunate situation is people writing policy, particularly for you, we've already talked about the oral health issue when you put on, right? Um, but what, you know, what affects the microbiome, but how does it affect the child's development? So the latest research again shows um, that the latest research shows it's fundamentally related to that okay between seven months to five years after five years most of the kids ability to judge someone's face and make determinations is about 88 percent developed that's what they five years of age a kid's ability to distinguish faces and characterize them is 88 percent um that equivalent to an adult okay so anyway someone's people are saying that we're cutting in and out, so i may do this again um, but I'll follow up later tonight and I'll do a follow up on it if everyone uh, to that. But anyway, I hope, um, you know, what we can do, we can probably, do we have someone's hotspot? No one. Okay. All right. Anyway, we'll come back. And we'll, uh, in fact, I'll come back and do it again. Maybe I'll use my hotspot. We'll come back. Anyone we will be back. Okay. We'll try it again. Thank you.